Hello, feline fools. So here are the four foster kittens. One there, one there, and these two chilling right here. So it's been six weeks since I first took them home. At the time they were four weeks old, so yeah, they're about 10 weeks old now. And if you have been following along, you may know that they were sick. They're better now. Um, there was a stretch where they were losing weight and they all had upper respiratory infections and eye infections. And I've been giving them medicine. They were taking Famsiclover and amoxicillin. And I had their mom cat with them and she was taking Famsiclover and doxycycline. So um, then a little bit later, all their eyes got better. One of them had an, still had an eye infection, so I was given eye drops for how to give for like 10 days. And finally, done with all the medication, so I thought. And last week, they were brought in to get some shots and dewormer. And at the time, the mom cat was ready to be spayed. Um, she was with them up until last week, or last Thursday, and just before that, once the kittens reached about eight weeks, she went into heat. So then, which would have been around the time that she'd be, you know, the kids would be ready to be on their own and she could be brought in to be spayed, but then while she was in heat, had to kind of ride that out. So it was about five or six days, and after she was over that, brought her in. So I brought her in, well, I brought them all in on Thursday. So the mom cat to be spayed, and then kind of some reality sunk in that she wasn't coming back home, and I was kind of sad about that. And, but, you know, so she got spayed, and then she'd be, she was gonna, when I brought her in, she was, Scheduled to be spayed the next day, and the day after that, she was a, became available for adoption. And at the same time, when I brought the kittens in for their shots, they didn't come home with me that day. That was Thursday. They actually, two of them were still pretty nasally and congested. I mean, they were still way better than they were when they were initially sick, but they decided to... I brought them to the, the cat adoption organization. They wanted to keep two of them to get them checked by the vet. And so, you know, having dropped them off that earlier in the day, and I brought two of the cats home, kittens home with me. But two of them stayed, but, you know, the, the thought at the time was that they would get checked out, maybe get some medications again, and then I would bring them home that day. So I went back to pick them up. So I thought, and they decided to, the vet wanted to, keep them and give them some nebulizer treatment. And so, okay, for one day, then I thought I was gonna pick them up the next day. That would have been Friday. And turns out that the vet wanted to keep them over the weekend. So then basically that was Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. So they were with the vet for four nights. And then I went back on Monday to pick them up. It was this one and this one that stayed at the vet. Um, actually, no. This one stayed at the vet. This and this stayed at the vet. And this and this came home with me. And so when I picked them up on Monday, when they were ready to come home, and I was able to visit the mom cat who was available for adoption, and you know she was added to the website, and I got to, well, while I was there to pick them up, I visited her and hung out for a little bit. And then um, I was planning on going there to visit her this week, either you know, probably tomorrow, 
But now I see on the website she is not on the website, so I'm hoping that means she was adopted. I'm kind of sad that I won't, when, was going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to see her if that's the case, but happy that she was adopted. I mean, she was a really friendly cat, um, so I would, um, she would sit on my lap and purr while these kids would run around. Now they're, well, they were running around a lot, so now they're all tuckered out, but yeah. So now they're, they're chilling. So now, um, since I took them on Monday, now they're another two weeks, another 14 days. I have to give them Famsiclover or Famsiclovir, whatever it's called. The, it's like a feline herpes medication. I mean, that's common with cats. That's what they have. It's like a, um, most cats have it. Um, that's what caused their upper respiratory infection, but they were way past the worst. So when they first were sick and I, they were losing weight and I, they weren't eating at the time. They were still feeding on, you know, nursing with their mother around the time when they would start weaning and start eating food on their own. But then they were lethargic and didn't have an appetite. So it was, I was a nervous wreck there for like three or four days, I didn't get any sleep because I was afraid to wake up and find, you know, I was really afraid to, to wake up to a dead kitten. This one right here was really um, behind the others. And I turned, in the end, I had to force feed it. So started like the, using the syringe to give them the medication squirted into their mouth. I always had to do that with some kitten formula. Eventually, I had to come around and started nursing. I mean, started bottle feeding and she would just, or he would um, drink from the bottle. And the other three started eating solid food. And you know, they started gaining weight again, so they were recovering. But I was just really surprised that the vet decided to keep them overnight was essentially for four nights when they were a lot better than they were at the worst. At that time, I was really questioning that decision. Like me, a, a rookie kitten fosterer, <laughs> handling a situation like that where they were tiny kittens at the time, they were less than a pound, losing weight, and they were, I was trusted to take them home at the time when they a vet decided to keep them. That's when they were running around. They were fine. Yeah, they were nasally and, you know, whatever treatment they got done helped. But to have kept them then when they were getting better compared to when they were really bad. Well, anyway, so at the time, I last week when I thought I was just bringing them for their shots thinking i was bring, gonna bring them home i was gonna con just confirm what their males and females because i was gonna announce their names i've been uncertain to reveal it because i wasn't sure i wasn't certain whether they were males and females or which were which i had an idea but i kept second guessing it because it turns out there's one female and three males. When I first took them home, I, they, I was told there was two males and two females. And so I was kind of going by that and just a lot of second guessing, but yeah, it's certain now. So and now they're all ready for a nap, but yeah. So that's what's going on with them now. They're healthy. They're now close to three of the four are close to two and a half pounds. This one is two and a half, half pounds. I weighed them tonight and the other three are close and they're 10 weeks old. So I figure now that they have after tonight, they'll have 12 more days of their medications to go. And then after that, I figure they should be ready to get spayed and neutered and become available for adoption. But while they're, 
until they're done with their medications, they'll, I guess they'll be staying with me. So yeah. All right. So that's what's up with them. So the next video, I am going to reveal their names and probably be when they're running around. All right. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.